folks, Little Chuck here with a new video lesson and uh, a couple of people have requested this, so uh, here it is. Now, um, this is about playing harmonica and guitar together blues style, okay? So this is not a blues harp lesson and it's not a blues guitar lesson. This is about playing blues harp and blues guitar and putting them together, okay? To, now, um, what I realised while I was doing the lesson plan for this was that it's actually a really hard subject because of course everybody's going to be at different levels, alright? So you've just kind of got to bear with me and hopefully I'll cover everything. And um, so this now is about feel, okay? It's not about how good a harp player you are or how good a guitar player you are, okay? Um, I'm assuming, by the way, that you've got to have some, you've got some chops on, on these instruments, okay? So. This isn't about yeah, how good you are, this is about making the two work together, making them gel. We know with the blues that it's all about the feel, okay? We've all seen rubbish bands, where bands are just not gelling together. And in that instance, you can blame the bass player if you're in that band, which you usually do, or you can blame the drummer, alright? Never blame the harp player. Um, but when you're doing it yourself, well, it's only you to blame, okay? But the flip side to that is you've got all the control, okay? And, and when you've got all the control and you make the feel right, okay? And you're making the music flow, I tell you, without getting hippie-ish, but it's kind of a pretty nice zone to be in, okay? It's a really great feeling, okay? But it takes time to get that kind of going. Now, if you haven't seen what I do, I, I do this. <laughs> Okay, back in the room. Uh, so there's one man band, and I've been playing harmonica and guitar together uh, at all gigs over, over the last 25 years, you know, um, thousands of gigs. And I play it always together, okay? Every song I play it together. So now for me, the harmonica and the guitar has become one instrument, okay? And um, so all my phrasing that I do is based around the phrasing that the guitar's doing or based around the phrasing that the harmonica's doing, okay? making the two work together. You know, it's not just some random kind of a kind of approach, all right? And by the way, if, you, if you're brand new to playing harmonica and guitar together, I have got a beginner's video on the basic principles and the fundamentals of which. I'll put it up on the video screen there now, okay? Right, um, check that out. So, all right, this is now about feel, okay? Now, we're gonna go using a, uh, a A harp, okay, over an E blues, second position, okay. Now uh, I'm going to delve into the blues scale a little bit, and if you don't know about that, there's a video going up there now. Um, and uh, we're going to, yeah, um, get into a bit of this. Now, if this is sounding like gobbledygook, um, we, we, you might need to step back a bit. But, um, but anyway, if you get the idea of second position blues and everything, and what keys we're playing in, will be sweet. Now, if you haven't got an A harp, okay, now you just have to put a capo on um, and, and use the key of harps that you've got. So say you've got a uh, B flat, then put a capo on, uh, on, on the first fret or um, capo on the third fret if you're playing uh, a C harp and you're playing in G, whatever. Anyway, so what we're trying to do is get a groove going. Essentially, which you want to, I know that everybody wants to run before they can walk and all of that sort of stuff, but we're going to strip it right back to its fundamentals of what's going on in the music, okay? Right, jump into the assumption that you can play a 12 bar blues on the guitar. Okay, some kind of thing like that. Right, we're now not even going to do any chord changes. We're just going to sit on that groove for a while. And we're going to choose a note on the harp that works really nicely with that. So we could choose, I don't know, two draw, for example. Okay, or if you're not good on your single notes, two, three, and four. Now, what can you do with that groove? Not even done a chord change yet. 
we're trying to, you want to keep that rhythm going. Yeah, now this is keeping it really simple harp over the guitar. Okay? If you're a, a great harp player, you've got to pull back just so you're hearing where those notes are falling over the groove of that guitar. Yeah? Okay. So now let's just say that you're not confident so much on the guitar, but you're better on the harp, okay? Again, strip that harp down, but strip the guitar down. Just get to... Yeah? Strip the guitar back a bit and just groove over it. If you notice, most of the things that are happening actually is happening with this hand. I'm keeping that rhythm. Bam, bam, bam. You know, it's the equivalent of working to the metronome, okay? But you are the metronome now, okay? Now, talking of metronomes, but you know, in, in all honesty, you don't practice against a metronome and you hate them, um, and, but you also know that your timing ain't that great. Just get one and do it, okay? I, my, it was life changing for me many years ago, you know. I, I had these tortured moments of the metronome, thinking of, you know, old piano lessons and the cranky old ladies hitting you with rulers, okay? Um, you know, it's realistically, the metronome is, is your best friend for getting the grooves going, okay? So I'll get into that. Right. So, um, where was I up to? Okay, so now we're going to put in some chord changes. Now, if we know the 12 bar blues, one chord, four chord, and five chord in the key of E that I'm playing in now. Okay, E, A, and B. Now, you should also know in your mind's ear what the 12 bar blues does, okay, and when the changes are, okay. So, I'm going to keep on a really, really simple 12 bar blues pattern, and I'm going to play really simple harp, okay, and I'm going to play it slowly, okay. We can't run before we can walk on this stuff, okay. The idea is now is I'm trying to make the notes work over the top of the guitar. Okay, are you ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. What happens now? very basic harp over those changes. So no matter how good a harp player you are, strip it back, okay, so you can hear it where those changes are coming, okay. So, let's just say um, you wanna you know, try some other harp chops, okay, some licks or whatever, okay. Then strip the guitar back, okay. So we know where those chord changes are, okay. If I play that speed. So now I'm just gonna play basically the first kind of, you know, beats of the bar with the chord, you know. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Go for a um, a lick. Okay. Now this is what I'm going to call my uh, four four three three lick. Okay. Now I, I teach this to a lot of students uh, when I'm teaching them about um, second position harmonica. But we're going to play it here. Okay. Four four three three. Okay. So we're going to go 
uh, four draw, four blow, three draw, three blow, all right? It is mind-numbingly boring. Okay, now, this lick is not in about how complex it is, because I've just proved it's not complex in the slightest. It's about how it feels when you start messing around with the placement of those individual notes. Now, for the astute of you there, you might notice that when I actually play this lick now, okay, I actually hit two draw, because two draw, for me, has a lot better feel than three blow. But you can just do three blow, okay? Um, so, I'll hit two draw. Okay, so here it is. I'm just gonna now place it over a basic E chord. Can you hear that? It's now no longer. So whatever your groove happens to be. Rephrase it. Yeah. Same lick, but I'm putting it over different grooves. So, what you can then do is, is get a, a, say, a basic groove going on the guitar. <laughs> and just let it roll around and get that lick yeah so you can put that to anything you can play is using a lick that you internalize and are able to rephrase over the style of the rhythm that you play, okay? So, the great thing about a lick like that as well is you can play it over all three chords of the 12 bar blues pattern, okay? So, for example, now I'm gonna play it and I might add a couple of extra little flutters here or there, but it's essentially that. Okay, so here we go, all right? One, two, three, four. to do is internalize this stuff okay that's the basic principle of it you don't want to have to be thinking at all really so if I say for example got that groove going on the guitar there or whatever it be I don't want to be thinking about what my fingers doing I want to be sitting over the top of that confident guitar player, you know, confident to be able to get a groove going like that or whatever, and, and, and this is your main, main, main thing, then get a good harp groove going, okay, and start putting in a groove underneath it, a very basic groove, so, I don't know, yeah, uh, don't think so. Kind of idea. Right, now let's just uh, change the feel a little bit. 
let's go for um, like a really slow blues feel. Okay, so. Now realistically, what's my heart playing gonna sound like? What's going through my head at the moment when I'm thinking about this groove? I mean, I can hear the harp in my head now. And I'll tell you what it ain't. It ain't this. Yeah, it ain't gonna work. So, let's think about what that harp should sound like in amongst that, okay? It doesn't matter what the lick is, what the riff is you're gonna choose. What it's gonna do is sit with that. Play an E to A. And I'm playing the notes really simply, but making the notes last, giving them phrase, giving them feel. I mean, as I said at the beginning, you know, I treat this as one instrument, and it's like a voice, this, you know? It's it's an extension of your voice, okay? So, you know, if you're not rambling, rambling, rambling like I am in this video all the time, you know, you've got to get, you've got to phrase things nicely and that's where it, it, all, it, it all lies. I mean, there's some of the early great blues players on the harp, it's all in the, in the feel, you know, we know this stuff, okay? So, this is what I'm suggesting. Now, one of the other things I forgot to mention as well is, is if you've got a brace, okay, make sure it's a good one. Okay, because there's nothing more irritating. I mean, I've had hundreds of these over the years. This is a K&M, and, uh, and the K&M one for me is fantastic. Now, you can play around with whichever one's going to work, but what you don't want to be doing is flopping forward. You want to be able to concentrate on, the, on your heart. The other thing, um, another little tip as well, um, is that I'm sat down, okay? So I'm sat on my diaphragm and, and everything's squashed down. Re realistically, you know, I, need, I, I should have a better posture for this um, because you know, you're going to be, when you're playing like this, you, you, your breathing's going all over the place. So, something to think about. Okay, now, I think I've covered just about everything. Well, you know what I mean. So, if you've got any questions, okay, um, just feel free to write some comments in, in the bottom. You know, play nice and all of that. And I say, it's been pretty random, this, uh, this lesson. But, uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to holler out. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've liked what you've seen here, if you want more, let me know. Um, I also do Skype lessons. Uh, just holler out, um, Facebook, you know, all of those things I do, websites, uh, and uh, I've got albums out on um, on all the digital platforms and via my website, backyardmusic.co.nz. So, yeah, if you like my style, please subscribe, and, um, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers, Davey, Little Chuck, the one-man skittle machine. <laughs>